Hi, I'm Mark Sawan Sang, Banking Ambassador, and I am here at WPPI 2020. It does not look like the trade show floor because we're actually interviewing this in one of the suites rooms, so this way we can control the sound a lot better and you can hear me without a lot of noise and commotion and also people walking by and just looking at me and it makes me camera shy, just a little. Okay, <laughs> beyond that, uh, this is a rare opportunity that I have somebody from BenQ that is willing to sit down with me and answer the question. I have Chris by me right here. Chris, thank you so much for this opportunity. No problem. And I've known Chris for more than five years now. And oh yeah, definitely. Chris, yeah, right? yeah. Chris has just been amazing. <laughs> Easy to talk to and, and we can geek out on color. So every time I see Chris, when we talk about color, like, hey, what about the color? Does, I mean, you would think that color management would be set by now, but it's really not. And there's still a lot more for us to talk about. So I'm learning a lot from Chris, but Chris is BenQ senior color expert. Yes. So I'm gonna have you just take the you know wheel from here. Chris, tell us more about what you do at BenQ, and I, it feels like you know because you're dealing with color, you're at the center of everything, right? Because right. all the screens are color, and you know you guys venture into the pro line. But we'll talk about it later. But tell us what you do at BenQ. Okay. Um, in essence, because I do really a lot of stuff, okay? In essence, I do all the uh, color specifications for all the product lines, um, especially monitors, because mm -hmm. um, I literally uh, establish all the vertical monitors, um, for, for example, the SW lines, the PD lines mm -hmm. as well. So all the uh, color specifications, I um, literally establish uh, how um, strict Mm -hmm. It should be, for example, delta E's. Right. How s little, how s small it should be. Yes. Okay. So the smaller uh, number, better one. Right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. We, we all know what delta yeah. E is, and I'm just joking. On that yeah, one. that's yeah. the color difference. So the smaller, the better. Yeah. Okay. And also, um, for example, the color tune, like mm -hmm. uh, what kind of color mode you should have and uh, what kind of color uh, representation we should have on the monitors. Right. That we need to establish that as cool. well. Yeah. Talk about color mode. Right. I'm very curious, uh, curious about uh, BenQ. A, a few of your later, later displays, you have a new color mode called M-Book. Yes. And the resemblance to an Apple built-in display is just really uncanny. What's the difference between M in M-Book color mode compared to Display P3 or DCI P3? Just, you know, simply, you know, enough to explain to us what the differences are so that we have an idea. All right. There's a little secret about this um, M-Book mode because um, I think not everybody understand this that um, Apple displays, they do a little bit of color tweaking on their displays. So uh, the M-Book mode is trying to make our display looks like a little bit about um, like the Apple displays. So um, when you actually turn on the screen and when you switch to M-Book mode, it will look, um, it's trying to simulate what it looks like on your MacBook or on your iMac. Yeah, so it will seamlessly, uh, when you drag your pictures from your I iMac or your mm -hmm. MacBook, it will look the same. So, um, but display, display P3 is um, standard, so that is no color t tweaking at all. So if you um, turn to that um, display P3, mm -hmm. it will not look exactly like Apple. Gotcha. Display, yeah. So where does DCI P3 come in at all this? Because there's Display P3, DCI. And yeah, those, that is know, a Apple tricky question. Three. Yeah, um, Display P3 is actually a different, um, I would say, um, a differentiation from um, the DCI P3. Okay. DCI P3 is originally from for the um, I would say cinema. Okay. For it, it stands for Digital Cinema uh, Initiative. Okay, so it's for theaters, oh, it's wow. for projectors, for digital projectors. So they have a really greenish white point, mm -hmm. which is if you see on the screen, uh -huh. it's kind of really greenish, which is really, um, you think it's kind of weird. Yeah. Yeah, so display P3, they um, change the white point to D65, so which is more standard for the screen. Gotcha. So that's why it's called display P3, <clears throat> but the color gamuts are the same. Really cool. Yeah. That's really interesting. I'm, I'm still learning something new yeah. from, from talking to Chris. Right. 
So from knowing Chris all these years, one of the things that we have in common is the love for coffee. Oh, yes. In fact, I think you own a coffee shop at one point, right? Yes. Is that correct? Yeah. And you were mentioning that there's this coffee that you drip on ice or something and it's super smooth. I yeah. really wonder. I haven't found that yet. I really tried that. But Chris travel with his own coffee, too, which is really amazing because I, you know, I'll, I'll just go get Starbucks because it's a little bit easier around the corner. But, you know, that's just me. Uh, but I, I respect that. Yeah. But, um, and, and. From our conversation, I've gathered that there's a synchronicity of um, coffee with color management and all these things. Do you <laughs> want to tell us more about that, that philosophy? All right. Um, this can go back a long way. It's because... okay. We got all the time all right. in the world. <laughs> okay. So should we start with the history first? Yeah. Let's okay. Because coffee is my passion. Because um, because it's actually one of my cure for my headaches. Oh wow! Because I have my, I have a migraine, very mm -hmm. serious migraine. Okay, and all the medicine doesn't work, so I need to take coffee every day, and um, so it becomes a habit. But but then I figure out why I should take bad coffee. Why can't I take good coffee? So what is a good coffee? So I started to research, do research, and to try to taste different coffees. And I found out, wow, you know, you don't need to put sugar, you don't need to put cream, you can have really good taste of a coffee. And right. a coffee is sweet. Yeah. It's not bitter. Yes. It's not <clears throat> toast. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not like um, blackened at all. It's sweet. Okay, I'm tell you, mm -hmm. telling you that without any sugar. Okay, so. Um, that's how I first learned that, and um, as I, I was amazed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then, um, but I couldn't figure out how to make that coffee without roasting your own beans. Wow! So that's how I got into the roasting mm -hmm. part of my co my own coffee. Okay, so, and then uh, when I get when you get into your roasting your, your own coffee, mm -hmm. that's how you get into your color management. Right. Because if you want your roasting to be consistent, mm -hmm. you have to look the color. Oh, wow. Right? Nice. So how did you determine uh, your roast is done is by the color? So if you um, don't have the color right mm -hmm. at every, your every roast, then you probably you, you will um, go over roast or under roast. So making sure your color, uh, the color of the roast is right is very important. So you have you have to have what you have to have consistent lighting right. at your roasting environment. Wow! So right. what light did you use a D sixty five light bulb there or? Well, telling you the truth, I have a studio light. Oh, nice! Really yeah, awesome. I have really I have studio lights controlled at D sixty five. Wow! So for those of you who yeah. don't know, D sixty five is sixty five hundred Kelvin is the light spectrum that we can see the most color, and that's where our displays are calibrated at too from the factory. And that's even if you run any kind of calibration software, D sixty five is the one that we use. But anyway, back to this, and this is really right. fascinating. I'm just learning about these two. Yeah, and then um, there's always a so official sample card. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's how we determine the roast. That's how I do that. So I don't think a lot of people are doing that, right? Not a lot at all, actually. Yeah. I don't yeah. Think so, so that's how I picky, how how picky I'm doing my roast, and that's why um, my coffee t always tastes different than the others. Okay, I've got to go visit you for that cup of coffee. Exactly. <laughs> you should come to Taipei. <laughs> that has been a request for a long time, but yes, I will make that yeah. happen. Yeah. And so that's why um, I travel with my own coffee. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, very sadly, in Vegas here, they don't have a kettle. I can't make my own coffee. Yeah. That's all right. We're going to give you a <laughs> uh, portable kettle that you can take yes, down the road. Yes, right. They can take anywhere from 110 to 240. 240, yes. There yeah. You go. So, how the. Let's let's move that to get into senior uh, color expert at Bank Hero a little bit. Right. I know that you also sit on the ICC board for color yes. management, which is fantastic. I mean, uh, the first thing I found out from you was that it's like, oop, mind blown. Like, yep, yep these are all the <laughs> color experts that are there. Uh, how did you got into that role, and did that happen first, or did BenQ happen first before you got okay. into the ICC role? Um, I joined BenQ first. Okay. Okay, and then. Um, I actually started, like I said, I started the um, 
vertical monitor mm -hmm. line, right? And then um, because when we actually have the product um, designed mm -hmm. and produced, and then um, we think of like how should we roll out um, this um, like um, how should we roll out this um, um, sales channel, mm -hmm. and how should we persuade that the um, our salesperson, right. or how should we persuade the, the uh, users that we are. Um, strong in color mm -hmm. so one thing i can think of that uh, we should join icc okay we should let the um these icc people know that we are serious okay so this is one point that we joined icc so actually we joined icc since um 2015. wow okay yeah 2015. oh so it's a year that you guys launched yeah uh, the smu line yeah yeah, yeah that's wow. right yeah so um, back then, and that's why, um, because there are not a lot of um, people who is in uh, display industry mm -hmm. in ICC. Yeah. Oh wow, I did not know that part. Yeah, because okay. most of the uh, people there were, are in uh, printing industry. Oh right, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's why um, the ICC was formed um, basically from the printing industry. Gotcha. Okay, so from the display industry, uh -huh. uh, there actually, um, yeah, there's not a lot of people there. So when I joined, they were really excited. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and then um, a year after, I was, um, they elect me as um, the vice chair of the display working group. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. So then, um, yeah, ever since um, right now, I was, I'm, I'm in the uh, steering community mm -hmm. and also I'm actually the vice chair of display working group. So I get to discuss a lot of the um, standards for the displays and also lots of stuff with the uh, standards coming up with ICC. So right now we have the uh, latest version of the ICC V5, which is called ICC Max. Gotcha. Yeah, which is very important because um, it can carry the spectral information mm -hmm. For um, all the color measurements, and it can solve a lot of problems with um, c current actually ICC V4, which gotcha. cannot do. Oh wow! Yeah. So, so that's is, what, that, that's what we're promoting right now. This is awesome. Yeah. Uh, this this really nicely leads into the next point that I want to talk about. Is you know I I know why I choose BenQ. I know why I like BenQ because back then when BenQ launched their SW hardware calibrated display line, there was really two other manufacturers in the market and their price were exorbitant. It's, you know, it's not affordable for me as a photographer back then. And as of now, I still think that BenQ is one of the brands out there that represents an amazing value. And that's from my standpoint. This is them, not that they uh, pay me to say this or anything or, or as their brand ambassador. This is genuinely what I believe because I believe that with BenQ SMB displays, photographers and video editors or any colorist like you out there can get great color out of their display that you would not be able to do otherwise if BenQ didn't jump into the market. What BenQ have also done too is become the catalyst for other companies who come into the market. But the one thing I want to mention about this is because Chris sits on the ICC board and that's one reason that you should think about BenQ first because no other display manufacturer or very few of them that are making hardware calibrated display right now sits on that board with Chris and that's something to think about. But I'm going to segue this into asking Chris of what, is, what are some other reasons why we should choose BenQ from your insider perspective? Because I know as an outsider, I always tell everybody to get BenQ. Right. You guys make great displays. Thank you. Um, okay. We make displays. We make these kind of uh, hardware calibration displays. Mm -hmm. We started this um, because of one reason, because we would like the users, um, the real users, to be accessible. I mean, the product to be accessible for the real users. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because for my previous life, okay, my last job, okay, um, I was helping the printing industry. Okay. Okay. To get into the, all this uh, kind of like soft proofing. Um, like upgrading their uh, current workflow into the soft proofing um, workflow. Mm -hmm. But the first um, challenging they had was trying to get a decent monitor to work with. All their, mon all their choices was like very high-end monitors, right. which they cannot afford at all. Yes. So 
they weren't very accessible to them. So they can that's a barrier for them to work with. Right. So when BenQ approached me to, to have this idea to start a um, line of monitors which can be very accessible to this type of users, what I say, that's my goal. So that's why I joined BenQ to develop this kind of product. So this is the reason I joined BenQ. This is the reason behind the product development. Wow. And this is the product we delivered. So that's why I think this is very important why you wanted to choose BenQ. And we delivered the color quality. We delivered the, qual um, the color accuracy. So I believe this is why you really should consider BenQ. You should really try it out, you know. Because color is something that you should really, really look with your own eyes. It's not like I said it's good or you said it's good. You should really look, by, judge with your own eyes. I think that's really important. Absolutely. Yeah. So you got to see the color. But the other thing too, that this has been coming up in a lot of conversation with me. I'm starting to understand this a little bit more because I've been doing color for more than 15 years now and color management and doing end-to-end -end for photography reasons. and. The one thing is I can see color, so I can see what color is supposed to look like and what looks correctly and what's not. And I think that many of us too, that we should try to strive for that, you know, because I, I hear a lot of this when customer comes up to me or bank you customer and say like, your, you know, your screen is too cool. It's like relative to what are you looking at, you know, and it's always good to know that. But usually if you're able to get a BenQ display and you calibrate it, you may think of it otherwise that it's too cool or too warm or whatever that may be. but. Most of the time, I would say 99% of the time, those colors and the temperature that you're looking at are going to be spot on. So that's going to, that should now become your new reference to what you're looking at color-wise. And then afterwards, you know, then you can look at your MacBook and your MacBook is now not going to look normal. It's going to look too cool, right? And then the other devices are going to look too warm or whatever or whatever that may be. But that's the good baseline for you to start out with. But make sure you do calibrate your BenQ display. Anything else you'd like to add regarding the calibration? It's factory calibrated, so um, you can use it right out of the box right. as well. And so we have a calibration report to come with it. And I think that's very important to have a reference to that, telling you that it's calibrated piece by piece from the factory report. Yeah. Yeah. So if you see my video review yeah. of all the BenQ display, I always show the factory calibration. It's tied specifically to that display, that panel serial number and it's report individually. So if you look at another report, it will vary a little bit. There is tolerances within that line, but those reports are really great because then you know your panel is of good quality or it's you know, of great health.